This ain't gonna be the beach party. Steve Earle is a country rock musician. Uh, he is a very successful entertainer. Thank you so much. However, a couple of years ago, Steve Earle got on the wrong road. He got on the road to drugs. Uh, he has been convicted of heroin and cocaine. Part of his conditions of his probation was to perform within a prison in the state of Tennessee. That's why Steve Earle is here at this particular time. My mood ring just committed suicide. <laughs> I don't know what it's, I've never seen it that color before. The inmates are certainly looking forward to the show tonight. They've been locked down for two days and confined to their cells, which makes them a little anxious from time to time. So they're ready to get out and see what's going on with all the equipment coming in and really see the concert. They've been talking about it for several days. Uh, the build up here has been fantastic. I think they'll really be upbeat tonight. like uh, the ultimate folk functional heroin addict for a number of years. I, I'm, uh, I just made my first record straight this year. I got clean because I got locked up. Um, if that hadn't happened, I would have died. And uh, I don't have any doubt in my mind about that. I'm sure there'll come a point in, in time when, uh, when I uh, walk up to Tom Shriver, the judge in my case, and shake his hand and thank him for saving my life. But I'm not quite that well yet. She always 
Prison life is uh, a, a, a type of hell that you got to stay, you can't leave. The way you confine in a cage is like you confined as an animal. You're lonely, you, you don't trust nobody. Because if you trust people, you can get killed in there. It's, it's dealing with a whole lot of different personalities, you know. It's like. You don't have to just watch out for yourself, but you have to watch out for the next man also. People around her, I thought I was crazy. But when I came to prison, I saw some people that was even crazier than me. It's hell. I've seen people beat, I've seen them stabbed, I've seen people raped. They just don't care in there. It's not a place that anybody should come to at no time, period. Because most people don't survive this. It's, it's not no place anybody would want to be. Now I've been here four years, I think it's time to go. I'm ready to go now. About the time my daddy left about the big war. Saw my first pistol in a general store. In a general store. I was 13. Thought it was a final saver. Yes, I
Well, jail sucks. And I never really believed that I was gonna get out until midnight, the door to my cell came open. They turned me loose on the street in the middle of the night and I had, there was nobody there to pick me up. And uh, I realized I was three blocks from the nearest crack spot and I was all by myself. And um, I had a choice at that point for the first time in my life. The day that I went in, I didn't have a choice. I, I, an addict has no choice. I, instead of walking the three blocks, I picked up the telephone and I called a friend of mine and he came and got me and he drove me home. Got a record out called I Feel All Right. And I do believe that. And this was the first single from them. just long enough to know that I don't want any part of it. I think I actually thought that, that, that they didn't really sentence people to any amount of prison time for possession of narcotics, but almost everybody I was locked up with 
were there for drug related charges. A lot of them were people I knew from the street. You, you know you're in trouble when you get to jail and you know more people than you do on the street. Anybody here from Nashville? Yeah. Well, the Nashville people will really be able to relate to this, but uh, there's one of these sides of town in every town you come to. Just to ease my pain. I went downtown, it's just to ease my pain. I ended up out walking in the rain. I took my pistol and a hundred dollar bill. I took my pistol and a hundred dollar bill. Had everything I need to get me killed. Now, South Side girls, they suit me just fine. South Side girls, they suit me just fine. Long as I got money, they don't whine. Here we go. Devil lives on Lewis Street, I swear. He lives right down on Lewis Street, I swear. I seen him rocking in his rocking chair. I started way up the top of Lewis Street. And I walked down to the end. I started way up top and I walked down to the end. I go way down in the bottoms and I come back up again. And my mama told me, Papa too, they both talked and they turned blue, but I got them old South Nashville blues again. I can't be satisfied until they lock me up again. mine had a shotgun that we were gonna swap for marijuana and my friend chose to shoot the man instead of deal with him and uh, I was there so I was automatically guilty. The hardest thing about being in prison is not being there for my family, not, not being the daddy that I can be for my kids because I'm in here, you know. And I know that, that they need me out there. And, and it's, it's, it's now that I realize I didn't hurt myself by doing this. I hurt my wife, my, my kids. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not yourself that you hurt, it's everybody else. There's a movie out, it's called Dead Man Walking. And, uh, the guy that made that movie, Tim Robbins, called me and he asked me to write a song for it. The movie takes place in Louisiana, but I'm from Texas. I've lived in Tennessee about 21 years. Texas is my home state and I used to be very proud of that. But death, death row in Texas is called Ellis Unit 1 and Texas executed 23 of the 56 human beings executed in this country last year, so I'm nowhere near as proud of that as I used to be. This is Call Ellis Unit 1. I was fresh out of the service. It was back in 82. I raised some cane when I come back to town. 
When it to be all I could be Come home without a clue I married Dawn We had to settle down So I hide on at the prison Guess I always knew I would Just like my dad And both my uncles done I've worked on every cell block now Things are going good and Then they transferred me to Ellis Unit 1 Swing low Swing low Swing low and carry me Daddy used to talk about them long nights at the walls And how they used to strap them in the chair The kids down from the college they bring their beer and all And when the lights went out of cheer was in the air I guess Folks just got too civilized and old spark is gathering dust Cause no one wants to touch a smoking gun They got that injection now They don't mind as much I guess They just put them down at Ellis Unit Swing low, swing low, swing low and carry me Like lions, boys, and I seen them go like lambs. Helped to drag them when they could not stand. And I heard their mamas crying when they heard that big door slam. I seen the victims' families holding hands. Last night I dreamed that I woke up with straps across my chest And something cold and black pumped through my lungs Even Jesus couldn't save me Though I know he did his best But he don't live on hellish anymore Swing low, swing low, swing low and carry me home. Swing low, don't let go. Swing. feel all right. It's probably a more personal record than I've made in a long time. I mean, there's not going to be another record like this. Uh, 
in a lot of ways because I don't think there's ever been a year in my life, the year in which it was made, I changed more than I've ever changed in my whole life or probably ever will. Let's rock this joint. The 500 inmates here, uh, somewhere between 70 and 80 percent of them are here on drug-related charges. That's pretty much the national average. With drugs, they were uh, like the basis of my problem. Yeah, doing drugs led me to jail. I started smoking drugs when I was about seven years old. 
I first tried marijuana when I was about 13, and I first tried alcohol when I was 15. But then uh, my dad was a real bad alcoholic, so I switched over and I started drinking a little bit to see how it was. I've done crack, I've tried acid, I've drank. And then eventually I got hooked up with other friends who who in turn got me hooked on the cocaine, and then it turned into crack and LSD, and before long I was just threw out on everything. For anybody out there that would say that they can handle drugs and whatever consequences it would bring to them, I, they might be able to handle it. Then I thought that too. You know, I would tell anybody never to do it, you know, because it ain't no life or no future in doing drugs. Stay away from it and do what's possible. If you're doing drugs, the best thing is go get help for it because it ain't they're gonna lead you here. Well, here I am with a life sentence. My life is basically over with. I have no chance of getting out over some drugs, you know, what's the point? Drugs ruined my life.
If anybody out there does think that they can handle a drug problem, can you can you handle living here? This is the good thing that can happen. And the other alternatives uh, are uh, mental institutions where you stay for the rest of your life and uh, the cemetery. What I would tell someone, somebody out there now, is it's all about choices. You either choose to do right or choose to do wrong. It doesn't take as much effort to do anything right than it does to do something wrong. If you do right, you don't never have to worry about coming here. If you do wrong, then you better start thinking because this ain't no place that you want to be. Never at any time. So uh, make sure you make the right choice out there because it, 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 won't, it don't take long to get from where you're sitting now to where I am today. That's the outside out there, and this is the inside in here, and it's all the difference in the world. I want to thank y'all for coming because I know it's one of the few things you had a choice about around here, and I do appreciate you being here. Just that awesome Bamba sand tone, the radio blast and the bird dog on. It's a beat trip of a sound of town, no local yoga won't shut me down. Me and my boys got this rig on the wham, from a thousand miles from a guitar town. It's been very enthusiastic tonight. They really enjoyed the show. You could tell by their reaction, the way they acted in the, the gym, the way they responded to the music. But one of the inmates mentioned on the way out, it lightened the load for him. And to me, that means that he was able to forget where he was. And that was very, a very poignant comment to me. We're going to give you this one because we got to put it between the ditches. I got to get out of here. This makes me break out. And uh, till I see you again, uh, walk slow, drink lots of water, sleep as much as you can, and try to do your own time, you know what I'm saying? This is a Bob Dylan song. See ya.
Thank you, Cold Creek.